Hi there, I'm Council Member Evan Glass, and I want to welcome you to my new episode of Community Conversations. Today, we're being joined by Abi Janamanchi, who is the Senior Minister of Cedar Lane Unitarian Universalist Church. Reverend, good to see you. Good to see you, Evan. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. Well, uh, I have been to your church. We know each other well. And I wanted to chat with you because what I find special about the congregation you lead is that the pews are full of Christians and Jews and Buddhists and humanists and other people in our community who are looking for some spirituality and some guidance. Uh, and you are a leader in this community, not only Montgomery County, uh, but you've also held national posts too. And so in this day of coronavirus and the crisis that we are in, how are you dealing and working with members of your, of your community who are seeking some inspiration and guidance? Sure. Uh, thank you. That's a, an excellent question. Uh, it is uh, uh, a question that uh, kind of is at, in front of us as we go through this time together. Uh, our, our focus uh, within our community has been to uh, provide a, a deeper sense of connection uh, that uh, is within, among, and beyond us, uh, within providing the, the spiritual tools uh, that are needed for this time for people to be able to feel that sense of grounding and, uh, and connectedness despite the physical distancing and the isolation uh, that this time uh, uh, is bringing uh, into people's lives. Uh, and the connection among is to, you know, create uh, a feeling of community and belonging for the people uh, across walls, uh, even if we're not physically together, at least to feel that sense that we're part of a larger community. And uh, beyond uh, recognizing that uh, we're, we're all in this together and we are interconnected and interdependent. And it is not just about us, uh, our own lives, our families or our friends and our religion uh, you know, members of our religious community, but that uh, we also are connected to the larger community and finding ways to be of service in this time. So that's that's kind of how we have been approaching our time together uh, in these uh, uh, past few weeks. And we are in the springtime, and it is a very uh, memorable time, a celebratory time um, for many faiths around the world. We recently had Easter and Passover. We are now in Ramadan. Uh, and so uh, for people who, because we can't go into our religious institutions, how, how are you communicating and how are people choosing to communicate with you and other religious leaders? Uh... So, uh, you know, we, uh, our, our communication primarily has been through worship, uh, which we have taken completely online. So we continue to gather as a worshiping community every Sunday. Uh, and uh, we've been, uh, you know, lifting up themes, uh, both, uh, uh, you know, religious themes to mark uh, these special religious observances, uh, as well as, as uh, you know, themes of, uh, uh, you know, inspiration and hope uh, in a way that uh, it's not to deny or ignore the realities, the, the realities of death and suffering that's all around us. Uh, as we see this uh, virus spreading all over our country, as well as around the world, and we see, you know, more and more people being uh, affected and uh, and people uh, dying, um, and and so you know, uh, we feel that that uh, uh, all religious traditions have uh, important teachings uh, that are lifted up through religious observances like Passover or Easter or Ramadan or the Hindu festival of Holi, which is, uh, you know, a festival of spring, the celebration of joy, uh, that, that uh, it is a both end, that while we are navigating our way through life and the challenges and the trials and tribulations that it brings, we can still connect with truth, with love, with hope, with joy and uh, bring that into each moment uh, that we have and cherish those moments uh, that we share among ourselves and with each other. We are here today to say no to all systems and structures of oppression. 
to listen to the call of love and answer to that call of love with the yes of our lives. Yeah. Well, and your, your messages of truth and joy and hope and love, the ability to do so uh, via the internet and online, I think, uh, is a beautiful 21st century tool. And I know that you were the former president of the International Association of Religious Freedom. And I can think of no other way to celebrate that freedom than to do so online and communicate in an unfettered, un unfiltered way. So, so thank you for your leadership in that regard. And, uh, you know, for the congregations in our community who are looking to support those in crisis, be it those in health crisis and even economic crisis these days, what are you doing and what would you suggest to others? What, what, what should they do to help our neighbors? Uh, so we are, we are engaged uh, on many different levels. Uh, so we've been uh, raising uh, uh, funds for, for local organizations that are engaged in critical work like uh, Mana Food Bank, for example. Uh, we also, you know, are supporting uh, our Congregation Action Network, which is uh, a, a group of uh, over 70 congregations in the DMV region uh, that has now established an emergency relief fund for undocumented families uh, that have been impacted by the crisis, uh, including, you know, loss of uh, jobs, uh, lack of uh, health care, and also families that, you know, have been affected by COVID-19. Uh, we've had a few cases in uh, some of our member congregations of uh, people who either uh, have tested positive, positive or have died from uh, COVID-19. Uh, so, uh, so that's one way we are doing this. Uh, we're also uh, volunteering our time and efforts, uh, members uh, involved in uh, uh, different things, uh, including, uh, you know, volunteering for MUM, which is uh, the, you know, area, again, another food uh, organization that uh, you know is there to reduce food insecurity among residents of our county mm -hmm. uh, we are we are uh, mobilizing uh, to support uh, casa uh, that has put out a call for drivers uh, who need to you know take food uh, and and many of our members are making mass uh, and uh, you know gathering them and providing them to uh, to people both in our congregation and uh, you know giving it to hospitals in the area Sure. Well, well, you have uh, definitely a, a congregation that leans heavily towards social justice activities, towards uh, making sure that everybody uh, is cared for. And, and I applaud you. And, and I do love uh, visiting your church, usually during, during these uh, events where we support one another. Uh, and we have inspirational messages which are led by you beautifully. And, and because of that social justice bent, I know that you are also a sanctuary church where you have uh, a member of the community, Rosa Gutierrez Lopez, uh, who is an undocumented uh, woman with her family. My name is Rosa Ines Gutierrez Lopez. Soy de origen salvadoreña. I'm from El Salvador. And so she's been in refuge in your church for a number of years now, right? Well, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, she's been there for uh, more than 16 months uh, since December 2018. And uh, yes, uh, you're right, uh, she is undocumented and uh, has an active order of deportation against her from ICE. Uh, she's from El Salvador originally, has been living in this country for 13 years and uh, has three uh, U.S. born children. Uh, and including her how young. Is this situation usually I know your, your congregants care for her and provide services so in this time of staying at home and social distancing how is she be, is she and her family being cared for? Uh, well our uh, sanctuary team volunteers who are not just from Cedar Lane but from uh, uh, other faith communities who are members of uh, Congregation Action Network and the larger community uh, continue to be involved uh, of course uh, now uh, virtually uh, and uh, by phone, uh, and continuing to provide support to Rosa and uh, her children. Uh, so we have uh, people who now uh, order groceries for her online and ensure that those are being delivered on time. Uh, there are people who are study buddies for the children who are uh, supporting them with their ongoing homework uh, assignments and school. Uh, there are people who support Rosa and uh, the children, uh, you know, with some of their health needs uh, in reaching out, uh, making, you know, doctor's appointments and such uh, on her behalf. 
Uh, so it's uh, it's an ongoing thing, and and uh, the advocacy efforts are ongoing for Doña Rosa as well. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, has happened uh, in the course of uh, everything shutting down uh, is that the ICE field office uh, uh, relaxed their rule that uh, people applying for a stay of removal uh, need not show up in person. So they allowed for people to submit them by mail. Uh, which uh, we were able to do on uh, Doña Rosa's behalf. And uh, now we are hoping to uh, pursue an effort to uh, seek relief uh, uh, on behalf of Doña Rosa because of the COVID-19 emergency and uh, the real health risk that it poses. And uh, for someone uh, uh, who has uh, family members who are immunosuppressed, uh, and, and trying to manage all of this on her own in, in isolation, you know, is, uh, is a huge challenge. So we are, we're hoping to mobilize some public effort to, uh, in support of Doña Rosa for that, for that uh, particular issue. Well, you know, my, my hat's off to you and, and your congregants for caring for Rosa and her family for, for 16 months now. And, and, figuring out ways to continue doing it. I love the study buddy idea and uh, the, the food delivery as well. Uh, if people want to learn more uh, either about your congregation or getting more involved in, in some of your social justice efforts, how, how can they do that? Uh, they can uh, uh, access the information on our website, uh, www.cedarlane.org. Uh, and uh, there is information that uh, they should be able to find and uh, connect with uh, the people who are engaged in some of those efforts. And, and, and Reverend, I, I appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with all of us and, and share the efforts and your wisdom as well. And uh, as we're closing out this, this conversation, is, is there anything in scripture or, or any poetry that you'd like to share to provide some, some guidance and inspiration during these really challenging times? Uh, yes. Um... Uh, actually, there are, uh, you know, two pieces of poetry, if I may. Yeah. Uh, one is from uh, the poet Mary Oliver. Uh, she writes, Every day I see or hear something that more or less kills me with delight, that leaves me like a needle in the haystack of life. It was what I was born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world, to instruct myself over and over in joy and acclamation. And the second one is from the poet uh, William Stafford, uh, who you know, writes about the string, the invisible string that connects us all. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you cannot get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. Well, thank you for sharing those poems with us. And, you know, the thread that binds us all together uh, is our community, is our faith, uh, is our civic values. And one of the things that I've been working really hard on at the council is making sure that our social safety net is strong and all the threads that you and everybody else in our beautiful community stitch into that social safety net, that's what's gonna get us through. That's what is going to ensure that those who need help the most receive it. And so I, I um, appreciate you taking some time out of your day to provide a little inspiration and motivation to me and to everybody else who is listening. And uh, Reverend, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for your beautiful congregation. And as you noted, and as we all know, we are all in this together. And I look forward to working with you as we come out of this crisis to make sure that every resident in Montgomery County is loved, is taken care of, 
uh, and is respected. So thank you for, for everything that you do. Evan, thank you so much for all that you do uh, in service of our community and our values and, and the way in which uh, you and uh, members of the council and our county executive have been leading uh, with courage, with integrity and compassion in these times and, uh, and really you know, ensuring that that safety net that you mentioned about is available for all people uh, and, and really emphasizing about that love that you lifted up, you know, that love that will not let us go or let us down or let us off the hook. So thank you for your service. Well, well, thank you for that. And thank you all for, for watching this, this community conversation with Reverend Abi. And I look forward to having more conversations with you and members in the community in the future. Likewise, thank you. Thank you.